Charlie. Never saw a good uh, demonstration of both men's speed, Charlie. And at this point in the match, I would call it even all the way between these two. It's been very good, very evenly matched. Very close contest. Brad uh, working on that left leg now. And he's gone back to counter, laying leg for leg. Lane uh, went to the legs of Brad, uh, using them to break him down and go back to the arm, trying to control him that way. And Brad is countered going right back to single and double leg takedowns, dropped toe holds of his own. And at this point, he is in command. Brad applying that pressure. Lane working his way back toward those ropes. He may uh, get his break that way. Let's see. No. Brad uh, turning him out. Lane dragged himself, and he's got a long distance to go once again. Lane trying to work his way free, but uh, Brad uh, moving with him and moving with him well. Brad still in control, controlling that left leg of Stan Lane. Here's what I say, Brad shows a lot of maturity in many ways in that wrestling ring. 18 years old, Charlie, and a uh, young man who has only eight months of and yet has done so many things. And here again, moving back, like I say, showing that maturity. Uh, keying on that leg, getting it right back, and uh, keeping Lane uh, down and uh, immobile as much as possible. Lane going for the hair that's uh, being broken up by referee Larry Brock. Lane having his problems with Brad Armstrong right now. Brad switching to the step over toehold now. He's got that uh, bar on the leg. He's flying the pressure now. And uh, Lane starting to show the wear and tear somewhat. The pressure is showing on Lane. You know, it's good to see these fellows uh, diversify. They, uh, as we mentioned again, speed an important factor in two heavyweight ranks. But both men have been going uh, another way. Uh, throughout the contest. Nice take down. Got that single leg sweep, uh, couldn't quite overbalance him and kicked it out of there, Charlie. And Brad Armstrong once again in control of the left leg of Stan Lane. In the last couple of minutes, it has been Armstrong offensively and uh, more of a heavyweights uh, type of offense too, Charlie. More of a plotting, uh, deliberate type of movement in there and uh, in the same respect, he's controlling Lane in that way, so he's held Stan Lane down and in check for the last couple minutes. Don't count Lane out, though. Lane using his free leg, trying to uh, perform a chin lock, using the ankle, but uh, Armstrong, still with the leverage, uh, is able to crank that leg up that he's hanging on to and break his way free. And now laying in there like he is now. Again, he is in control with his 207 or 8 pounds laying across the back of Stan Lane. Lane twisting out, coming to his feet. Let's see if Brad can control it. But Lane's going to find those ropes and get his break here. The veteran, the veteran Stan Lane on a cheap shot uh, is able to neutralize Brad long enough to uh, get himself back into this one. Lane slowly moving over, crashing down into the back of the neck. He caught Brad unaware. Brad thought the break was going to be a smooth one there, but Lane using the kick to the back of the head, and now a knee driving into that head area once again. Stan Lane pulling back, trying to take his hand and the lead of this match. And now U.S. Junior Champion Stan Lane begins to open up on Brad Armstrong possible thumb used to the throat there. There's your bell, Charlie. Apparently this is all over, but both men still very much into this battle. A good, good match of wits between Lane and Armstrong throughout the time limit of the match. See what referee Larry Brock calls it here. continue this battle. Look at that move by Brad Armstrong. Catches a good forearm and Lane goes to the floor. No and contest. There it is. The referee calling this one all over. Not awarding the match to 
draw a match between Stan Lane and Brad Armstrong. Coming up next, Ron Bass takes on Robert Gibson when Southeastern Championship Wrestling continues. Auditorium at 8 p.m., a super Southeastern wrestling card. For reservations and information, call 322-7798. The Boutwell box office open Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. In the main event, a Texas death match. The Tennessee stud Ron Fuller battles cousin Jimmy Golden. The Southeastern Heavyweight Championship on the line is title holder Ken Lucas defends against outlaw Ron Bass. In a Southeastern tag team title match, the belts have been held up. Randy Rose and Dennis Condry take on Jerry Stubbs and Paul Orndorff. In a special tag team match, Bob and Brad Armstrong meet Mr. Saito and Stan Lane. Robert Gibson opens against Chris Markoff. Don't forget, Ron Fuller against Jimmy Golden in a Texas death match. The Southeastern title at stake as Ken Lucas takes on Ron Bass. Rose and Condry against Stubbs and Orndorff. The Armstrongs against Saito and Lane. It all comes together Monday night. Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium at 8 p.m. I'd like to remind you that next Saturday, wrestling returns to 2 p.m. here on Channel 42. That's 2 p.m. next Saturday. And also, one correction on the card you just saw, the Southeastern Tag Belts are not held up. The decision has gone with Condry and Rose. Jerry Stubbs uh, will be picking a different part. We'll be talking to you later about that in the program. With me, the father-son combination of Bob and Brad Armstrong. On Monday night in Boutwell Auditorium, they'll be squaring off with Mr. Saito and Stan Lane. Let's hear from Saito and Lane. You know, I can't hardly believe it, Bob and Brad Armstrong. I understand they have the biggest collection of Slim Whitman records in the Southeast. Well, that about sums you guys up as far as I'm concerned. You're two nothing happening individuals. You couldn't do it as singles now. There's no way you're going to do it as, as a tag team. Because I've got one of the biggest, the strongest, the meanest guys ever to come to this country from Japan, Mr. Saito. And brother, I'm so confident I've already got the champagne on ice. Bob Armstrong, you guys are loser. We are the winner. You know, loser, loser, nothing. That's a garbage. We are strong. We are champion. Look at the belt. Look at that. Ha ha. Nihon no san Bokuta chen Nihon de. Konna ni belt hotte. Nihon no mina san no tsuoi toko mita ni masu kara ne. Tetsuai ni otoke tsuoi toko ro. You know, American wrestler Bob Armstrong. You know I'm tough. You understand now, ha 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 ha. The title of winner and loser can change uh, at any moment, Bob. Exactly right. You know, I didn't hold that Alabama title very long, and I feel real bad about it. I let myself down in the fans, but I think Brad and I have got a chance to prove that we're all right as a team. And they're laughing a lot, but he who laughs last, laughs loudest. And in Boutwell, we're going to be getting down and bopping in Boutwell because we're going to prove that the team can do the job. Saito and Lane are so overconfident. I've never seen two people laugh so hard just think they're the greatest in the world from Japan and that he calls himself the idol the blonde haired angel well listen boys when we get to about well it's gonna get down to man to man to nitty gritty wrestling and no pretty face or no big ugly Japanese boys gonna get it done in about well that well auditorium Monday night 8 p.m. a super southeastern wrestling lineup you'll want to be there my pleasure to welcome the Southeastern Heavyweight Champion Ken Lucas to Southeastern Championship Wrestling today and uh, congratulations on that title win. Thank you Charlie. You know that uh, I am the champion now and that means I'm going to have a lot of challenges from a different uh, guys they've got in here and right now that uh, the main challenge that I'm going to have is from Mr. Ron Bass who used to hold this belt and uh, a lot of people said well Ken how'd you take the belt from Golden when I took it just like he won it for me. I had my good friend Ron Fuller back me up and I'm going to tell you one thing for sure man. Golden Bass going to want to get real hot and heavy. Myself and Fuller can get real hot and heavy, too. Indeed. Uh, you're saying that uh, uh, Ron Bass has challenged you to a title match. Of course, Ron Bass, one time holder of the Southeastern Heavyweight Championship. And uh, I guess that's uh, your main concern now is holding on to that very prestigious title. Well, we've got some very, very tough uh, competition in this area right now. And Ron Bass is probably one of the toughest. You know, uh, Ron is a big, rugged man. He backs up from nobody, and he keeps coming all the time at you. I know what I'm up against, and uh, I feel if I can get past Ron Bass, then Golden is yelling, I want a chance to this belt back. Well, I'd like to say one thing for you, Golden. I'll be glad when I do get a chance to give you a chance to this belt back, because I care for Ron Bass, and I care for Jimmy Golden, not worth nothing. Thank you very much. The Southeastern heavyweight champion, Ken Lucas. And it's springtime uh, in the Southeastern wrestling area, and a lot of uh, schools, clubs, and civic organizations are looking for ways to raise money. Band boosters, the athletic clubs at many high schools, and International Sports Incorporated, the new promotion of Southeastern Championship Wrestling, is pleased to help. We do have wrestling in schools and uh, for civic clubs. 
uh, for fundraising events. And if your club, school, or uh, civic organization is interested in promoting wrestling in your town as a fundraiser, you can write to the address you see now, Southeastern Championship Wrestling, P.O. Box 1089, Dothan, Alabama. The zip code is 36301 for the promotion of Southeastern Championship Wrestling as a fundraiser in your community. Our next match, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing, in the corner to my left, at 218 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, Robert Gibson. Gibson. His opponent at 280 pounds from Pampa, Texas, Ron Bass. Ron Bass. And it's Robert Gibson taking on the big man from Texas, Ron Bass. And uh, Gibson giving up quite a bit of weight in this match. A very determined Robert Gibson. Ron Bass, the man responsible for the injury of his brother, Ricky. Bell sounds, we're ready for action. Into grips. Back over into the turnbuckle. Bass takes Gibson. Good reversal coming out of that turnbuckle. Flying head scissors, good takedown. Gibson. Gibson's on the move, Charlie. No two ways about that. Robert uh, whittling away at big outlaw Ron Bass. And very effectively, Bass bails out. He's going to take that 10 count to uh, get it all back together. Here's a case of uh, speed and power. About a 65 pounds difference in weight here, Charlie. And as you saw, Robert Gibson offsetting that with a tremendous display of uh, aerial work and good, solid speed. Good side headlock by Gibson. Continues to apply the pressure. Swing and a miss by Bass, and Gibson uses that chance to grab that side headlock again. He's making Bass move with him, Charlie. And that 65 pounds that Bass has got in the weight is not any good when it comes to uh, doing a little track and field work out there. And that's exactly what Gibson's making him do, making him run. Good move by Gibson again, and Gibson once again has that side headlock on the big man from Texas. Speed is paying off in this match. Gibson's making him play his game, and thus far it has been very, very effective. Gibson applying the pressure on that headlock. Bass uh, a, bit, a bit perplexed by the whole thing now. Planning to come out here and intimidate Robert Gibson from the outset. Was not able to do that, and Gibson now controlling offensively with the headlock and bearing down on the pressure. Gibson uh, cinches up on the headlock. Let's see where Bass is going now. That atomic drop down on the base of the spine. The knee coming up to meet it. And Ron Bass free of the hold. Gibson's stunned now. Bass trying to shake out the cobweb. And moves in to try and take over here. And again with a second atomic drop. And Robert Gibson in trouble now, Charlie. Bass takes his man over into that turnbuckle. Gibson stunned on that way. Bass trying for the pin. Gibson out on the two count. Bass pounding away at that back. He's reaching him at that point. Charlie and Ron Bass trying to take over, working on the small of the back. Full body slam by the big man from Texas. Should have stayed with the back. He was 
very successful with a back. Missing on the headbutt attempt, and Gibson moves in on him. A right shot, and an elbow, sends Bass back into that corner. A kick into the chest, and again, Robert Gibson opens up now. And he's going to make the big man from Tampa, Texas move with him. But Bass anticipates, hooks him with that elbow, the cradle, and he's got him. The winner of the match from Tampa, Texas, Ron Bass. Bass, the winner of this match. And uh, joining us now, the team of Randy Rose, Dennis Condry, and uh, along with them, Mr. Saito. We have some videotape, gentlemen, of a recent match in which... Uh, you and uh, Dennis Condry were in action against uh, Paul Orndoff and uh, Norvell Austin. Let's roll that tape if we could and review that certain piece of videotape uh, going into the arenas of Southeastern Championship Wrestling and uh, picking up that action. Here you're looking at one of the best synchronized teams in the southeastern area, Charlie Platt. Me and my cousin, like we told you long before, they've been calling us eliminators now. We've already eliminated completely Norvell Austin. You know, Charlie Platt, right here, we got Norvell Austin in a bad way, brother. We told him before that match that he was coming back too early. Way too early. And that's exactly what he did. He came back too early. But you know, there's one thing about it now, baby. He won't be coming back at all no more because he did come back too early and his neck is hurt again. Compliments of one Dennis Condry and one Randy Rose. Indeed, an uh, injury suffered by Norvell Austin at the hands of uh, Rose and Condry. He went down and got him a permanent room at the uh, Dothan area Peace, Health and Wealth and uh, Rest Home down there. We put him out of commission for good. Now they want to come back and they want to hold up belts. Why do they want to do this, Charlie Platt? Tell us something. Is there a conspiracy against Rose and Condry? Are you in on this? Uh, Are these redneck farmers in on this? They're all in on it. And there we see. Look at this. Poetry in motion. Have you ever seen a better team in your life? Tell the truth now. Don't lie. Tell the truth. Right here, Norvell Austin has already given up about four or five times in this match, Mr. Platt. He's already given up. I heard him say, I give. Please, Mr. Country, don't hit me no more. Please, Mr. Randy Rose, please don't hit me no more. I give up. If you'll let me out of this match with my life, I'll call you Mr. Country. I'll call you Mr. Rose if you'll just let me out of this match with my life. So we let him out of the match there, Charlie Platt. We let him out of the match with his life. And you know what? Sure enough, he called me Mr. Condry when that match was over. And he called my cousin, I Mr. Heard, Rose. I heard it, cuz. I heard him say, please don't hit me, Mr. He's a lot of things, but he ain't no liar, cuz he sure called us Mr. Condry, and he called us Mr. Rose when it was all over. Please don't hurt me again, Mr. Rose. Comments Mr. of Mr. Randy Rose please. and Dennis Condry. Lord, how mercy. Please don't hurt me. This is what he's saying all this time. Here. Look at Musclehead here. Look at Musclehead Paul Arndorf. No tag whatsoever, you understand me. No tag whatsoever. Shot right in the ring, and he's hitting on my beautiful face. He threw me over the top rope right here. That should have been the match. That should have been it right there. But being the champions that we are, Mr. Platt, we're going to prove to everybody that we'll beat them right in the middle of the ring. One, two, three, daddy. There we what see some this? outside oh, help from Condry. One, two, three. Just like I... So you, you, you're a little biased yourself, Charlie Platt. You never seem to I see... I was just describing the, what uh, I saw on the, on the videotape. What you've all. seen may have been uh, tampered with. You never know yourself, Charlie Platt. You're a little biased myself. There they are. You know, there's one other little matter here I'd like to clear up here. You know, we got a muscle head by the name of Paul Orndorff calling himself the Southeastern Arm Wrestling Champion. Well, I don't believe it. Right here is the arm champion of the world, babe. Look at these arms. Show him your arms, say so. We took this man in bars all across the country. He snapped arms like toothpicks, daddy. Just snapped them. He snapped three arms in one night and put six other guys in the hospital. So let me ask you this, Paul Orndorff. Do you think you can beat our man here, Mr. Saito, in an arm wrestling contest? We're giving you a chance to prove it, baby. If you're not a coward, a dog that you are, you'll agree for his arm wrestle, Mr. Saito. Japanese arm wrestling. Rose and Condry in a you challenge. got the guts, Orndorff. 
Come on, we just for Paul Arndell from uh, Mr. Saito. Our personality profile coming up next with the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller. Wrestling is my pleasure to welcome back to the Southeastern Wrestling Area, the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller. Ron, you've had a successful tour of the West Coast. That's right, Charlie. Uh, I spent uh, uh, more than three weeks on the West Coast, and uh, I was able to win the Pacific Coast Championship, and uh, I was very proud of that. And uh, I probably would have still been out there in that part of the country had it not been for an incident that uh, we're going to look at here in just a few minutes that happened here at the television station. and. Uh, I was notified of it in California, and that's exactly the reason I'm back in this part of the country. I was going to say it's unfortunate for you to have to return to the area under the certain circumstances that uh, we're about to witness. Uh, many fans here in the southeastern wrestling area have already seen this uh, particular piece of videotape. It took place in this television studio uh, recently, and uh, it involves your father, Ron. That's right. Uh, he was here to, uh, to referee a match for a championship, and uh, he was attacked by Golden and Ron Bass uh, early in the morning, as we always do personality profile, as earlier in the day when there's nobody else in the studio, and I guess they figured that's a real good time to jump somebody because that's Golden and Bass's style, and, uh, and I'd like to say on behalf of my father, I think he'd have beat the hell out of both of them if, uh, if he had a little bit better chance at it, and, uh, I believe that down the line, uh, I know that he's still very, very mad about this incident. He's going to get his hands on Jimmy Golden somewhere at some time, and when he does, I'm going to be sitting in the building to watch it myself because uh, that's going to be a treat for me, a real let's, treat. Let's backtrack a couple of weeks and join a special segment of Personality Profile in which I was interviewing Buddy Fuller. Hey, I'm on a car with Hey, old man, Fuller, you know what Wait this is right here? What? This belongs to your son, the Tennessee stud. I ran him out of town, and you ain't what? refereeing no match of mine. I'm the one that's here to referee. I don't know. Hey, what they throw you in here, man? There you see uh, the attack by Ron Bass and Jimmy Golden, Ron. Well, you can see Golden shoves him in the ring. Watch this shot right there in the kisser. I think that's the end of Jimmy Golden right there. I don't believe he wanted any more of it. And as you can see, it's, it's hard for one man to fight two, and especially when you're unprepared to fight anybody to begin with. And uh, now they're really doing a job on him. You're going to see Bass holds him here for the pile driver, and Golden jumps off the second rope there and jams his legs. And, uh, and that's enough to put anybody out. And you're going to see here, they, they really just continue to do a, a job on him. And there's nobody in the studio at that time to help him. And, uh, and he was carried out of the studio that morning, and he was, he's gone from this particular area at this time. But he will be back, and he will get his hands on Jimmy Golden. But that's not the point anymore, Charlie Platt. The point is that a long time ago, I left this part of the country when Jimmy Golden turned on me, when Jimmy Golden pulled a mask off of me, and they beat and pounded me to death, him and Ron Bass. And I was humiliated and mentally unprepared to participate and wrestling in this part of the country. Well, I'm not that way anymore, Jimmy Golden, and uh, you know, it's a bad thing that the people just saw that. It's a bad thing you did to my father, but it's a good thing for me. I needed it. I needed something like that to fire me up and to bring me back into this part of the country and to give me the proper incentive to take care of you, Jimmy Golden, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, my old man always had a saying, you know, we always lived on farms or when we lived in ranches and stuff, there was a lot of snakes around, you know, and he says, if a snake ever bites you, he said, the thing to do is to step on him then or step on him before. Well, the snake bit me, and I didn't step on him at the time. But I've come more than 2,000 miles across this country. I gave up the Pacific Coast Championship, and I intend to do some stepping, Jimmy Golan. I intend to do some stomping, Jimmy Golan. I'm going to take care of the problem that you've created in this part of the country. You know, Charlie, this part of the country is the prettiest place I've ever been. I've wrestled all over the world. I love the West Coast. It's real nice. But this is home for me. This is where I want to participate. This is where I'm going to wrestle from now on. I'm never leaving this part of the country again. And I've been home now for a week or so. I've had people stop me all over this part of the country and said, do something about Jimmy Golden. Do something about him. We can't stand him. We want him gone. And Charlie Platt, I am going to do something for all of the fans in the southeastern area, for each and every one of you that wants to see Jimmy Golden get what he has coming to him. I intend to give him every bit of everything he's got coming, 
and a whole lot more, Jimmy Golden. When I get through with you this time, Jimmy Golden, when I finish the job this time, Jimmy Golden, you will be gone, boy, and you will be glad to be gone because when it comes down to it, when you did that to my father, you should have been gone then. This match, one fall, tag team match, 10 minute limit. Introducing in the corner to my left at a combined weight of 460 pounds, Paul Orndorff and Jerry Studd. Orndorff and Studd. Their opponents at a combined weight of 470 pounds, Joe Turner and the Superstar. Turner and the Superstar. Turner and the Superstar taking on Orndorff and Studd. Here we have a dynamic tag team combination. Orndorff and Stubbs are uh, looking so great as tag team partners. And uh, they have met and defeated some very tough combinations. Jerry and Paul both uh, very competent athletes. Joe Turner, a veteran brawler out against Jerry Stubbs. Turner and the superstar against Stubbs and Orndorff. We've got action here on the Southeastern Wrestling. Jerry windmills the arm of Turner, and again, Big Joe and a bit of a problem with tag made. Orndorff moves in. He goes to work on that same arm. And Stubbs and Orndorff control early on, offensively, the action in our ring. Tag is made with the superstar. Collar and elbow, Orndorff and the masked man. Orndorff shoots him cross ring. Both men down. Line the pressure, he got that foot laid into the side of the head, makes the tag, Stubbs moves in, and he goes to work on the arm. Stubbs and Orndar Charlie switching in and out uh, very well on both their opponents, and uh, they have controlled the lion's share of the action. Superstar reaching for attack with uh, Joe Turner too far away. Stubbs pulls him back. Stubbs takes him over, gets the count of two, but the mask man still in this one. Tag goes to Orndorff. Orndorff with a nice takedown. They are concentrating on the arm, switching in and out. And looking very good here. Some very, very tough tag team action in the area now, Charlie. The, the Armstrongs, Bob and Brad, Orndorff and Stubbs, Condry and Rose, Bass and Golden, Lucas and the Stud. A lot of tough combinations. Indeed. Uh, the latest entry to tag team action would be the Stud and Ken Lucas. And uh, Lucas, the Southeastern heavyweight champion, and the Tennessee Stud, always great competitor. Always a man to watch in that squared circle. Still on the left arm of the superstar, Jerry Stubbs, locking in with the bar. Drops that knee down along the jawline there, using that for leverage. Tags Orndorff, sets the arm. Oh, comes crashing down on the last man. Look at there, a beautiful block. That's a favorite maneuver of Condry and Rose. And of course, uh, these two men, as we mentioned, have looked very good in tag team com competition. And uh, you can see Stubbs and Orndorff using uh, many of those maneuvers for their own purpose. That left arm of the superstar being put out of commission by Orndorff. The tag again, they've been tagging quite frequently. Although Turner and the Masked Man have only made one pass through that ring each. And right now, the Masked Man being controlled. The tempo of the match set by Stubbs and Orndorff. Being put out by the referee as Orndorff moves in. On his hand, drops that elbow in there. Turner and Stubbs squaring off Charlie. And Turner going outside of the ring. Good back body drop. Teamwork. Orndorff flashes down. It's over. That's the winners of the match. Paul Orndorff and 
end, Jerry Stelz. A very good teamwork, Charlie. I think it exemplifies uh, what we were saying, that Orrin Dwarf and Stubbs uh, putting it together as a team, and uh, they're going to be a tough one to handle any way you look at it. Coming out to join us, Bob Armstrong, and uh, along with Jerry Stubbs and Paul Orndorff. We have some videotape, Bob. Uh, Paul and Jerry, congratulations on that win of a Southern Street Fight match. That's right, one of the wildest things that I've ever been in, like we were talking earlier. This match got completely out of hand. It's called a good old Southern Street Fight. Anything is legal, belt buckles, uh, cowboy boots, and everybody comes fully dressed, just like they'd go into the bar downtown, ready for a good old-fashioned street fight, and that's what we called it, a Southern Street Fight. It got to where you couldn't wrestle one without the other. We put all three of them in the ring, Jerry Stubbs, Paul Ondoff, and Bob Armstrong wrestling side. Ito, Condry, and Rose. Things got pretty tough. It was supposed to be a tag match, Charlie. Things got wild and woolly, and it didn't end up in much of a tag. Everybody was in the ring and out of the ring most of the time. We tried to go by the rules. They didn't go for it. You can see they got belts off. They're choking here and there, and we were just trying to hang on at this time because they had things going pretty well their way. But you know, the tide can turn in any second. If people know in a street fight, one good lucky punch, and the tide can turn for sure. And I had two darn good men with me there in Orndorff and Stubbs. And, brother, they weren't about to give up. And I was trying to, trying to keep my shoulders off the mat. It just got really rough and rugged. And this team you're against, uh, of course, uh, Condry and Rose with, with Saito uh, have caused many problems for not only you and Brad, Bob, but for Jerry Stubbs, as we've seen in recent weeks here on television. Well, that's, you know, that started with Randy Rose. In a way, I'm glad he, he did what he did because I can join Bob and Paul Orndorff and the rest of them. But right here, like Bob said, anything goes. They took off their belt, they're using their belt buckles, they take off their boots, they use their boots, but we can too. So in a street match, anything goes. So Randy Rose, Dennis Conry, Saito, anything's going, baby. That's we're gonna exactly be there. right. And you know, Paul had us got to score a score of subtle too because uh, Norvell Austin is put completely out of commission now. So uh, a you know, street fight's a good way to settle things, right? You better believe, you know, that's one way to get some revenge. You know, Norvell is out of professional wrestling. And, and any time another man deliberately tries to put a man out of his prof profession, that's uncalled for. It's unjust. There's no need for it, but it happens. So I, I just got one thing to say that uh, Rose and Condry, I'm going to be after you. I'm going to get a little bit back from the bell. I'm, I'm ready for this match. I'm ready. Right now, they may have the upper hand of us, but I'll tell you what, come tonight, it's going to be a little different story the next now time. You can, see, uh, you can see right here that they're undressing me. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to embarrass somebody, and they say that this match was uh, uh, interference from the outside, but they started the interference, and they want a return match because we ended up winning this. So we'll take that return match anytime, anywhere, street fight or any other way they want to go. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bob Armstrong, Bob Armstrong, and Jerry Testimony. Here on 42 at 2 p.m. next Saturday. And a super lineup. Monday night, Boutwell Auditorium, bell time, 8 p.m. Ron Fuller, Jimmy Golden in a Texas death match. The Southeastern title on the line as Ken Lucas defends against outlaw Ron Bass. As we said, the decision has gone with Condry and Rose. They are the Southeastern Tag Team Champions. With me, Jerry Stubbs, who will be taking another partner on Monday night to go against that combination. And, uh, of course, Jerry, the news is out. Uh, your partner is the Georgia Jawjacker. Let's hear the comments of Condry and Rose. Well, because they say the decision went with you and I. The decision don't have to go with us. We already know that we're champions. We know that we're champion caliber. And, Jerry Stubbs, in your eyes, you know that we're champions. We've showed you time and time again. We've eliminated all of your partners. Now you come with a George... How do you say that, Cuz? Georgia Jaw Jacker. Tongue Twister. Have you ever in your life heard of such a name, Cuz? Tongue cause? Twister. Well, there's going to be some tongue twisting, some arm twisting, and some leg breaking, some head knocking, boys. And you're looking at the champions. When the smoke clears the ring, we're going to be victorious. Well, Jerry, the champions seem confident. Uh, of course, uh, the Georgia Jaw Jacker is a very confident and competent wrestler himself. Well, you know, they're in for a big surprise. All they know is that it's a Georgia Jaw Jacker. They don't know who, you know, he wears a mask, but they don't know who's under that mask. Boy, y'all in for a big surprise, because I got me one heck of a partner, and we're going to be in Boutwell. You know, you, you call yourself champions. The decision was rendered to you. Well, you wear the belts. I don't call you a champion, but I do say one thing. You're tough. You and Dennis are a good team. You're hard to beat. You, you know, you perform well, but myself and the Georgia jaw whacker, let me, jaw jacker, let me tell you, we're going to do it, because, you know, I, you know, I just, I just can't wait because, you know, I can't wait till they see this Georgia Jaw Jacket. They're going to be surprised. Monday night, Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium. And uh, we're scheduled 
supposed to go into the ring, however, Jimmy Golden. I just want to remind everybody how I feel about these masked men and the way I take care of business. You know, I took this one off of a ex-Tennessee stud, you know, and I got just a little film here that I want to show everybody There's no so they can know what the great Jimmy Golden can do right there. There's no the film movie. schedule here. And I want you to see what happened to your man, Wait, the Tennessee stud. I destroyed him, and I took his Wait. mask off because I can't stand mask men. And I beat one here last week at Patriots, brother. I mopped up the ring with him. Look at me right there. The Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, land Where did this take? Begging for mercy. Don't hit me no more, Jimmy Golden. And he lost his place. Let's take this up. This, this, this tape wasn't scheduled. This tape wasn't scheduled to go on the air. Let's, let's what do you take mean? This. We're showing it, ain't we? Well, well I had it. The director knew about it. And I had it straightened out, and they got another masked man up here against me right now. And I'm fixing to go up here and take care of business, brother. Comments of Jimmy Golden. Let's go to the ring for the introduction from Al Roberts. Your attention, please. Our next match, one fall, TV time remaining. In the corner of my left at 220 pounds from parts unknown, the Demon. Here's a... Right in there, waiting for Al Roberts to finish the introduction to Charlie and goes to work on the demon. Last man being driven into the canvas by Golden and uh, the man that calls himself a super stud, Jimmy Golden, is pounding away on the masked man. Jimmy Golden going to work very hurriedly on the demon, pulls his man out. Golden kicking away at him, and the masked man has just even get a start as the big man from Montgomery, Alabama, pounds away. Golden, that kick into the midsection, doubles his man up, sends him to that canvas once again. Golden not letting up at all, staying right on top of the masked man. Going for that neck breaker. And he may have him here, Charlie. Wait a minute, he pulls him up again. Pushes Larry Rock off. Wait a minute, wait a minute, look at here, look at here. Ron Fuller moves out, rolls the referee out, taps Golden on the back, Golden brings it to the referee. And it's Ron Fuller going to work on Cousin Jimmy Golden, and we've got a battle. Look at that, he's stuffing that mask in his mouth. He's trying to stuff the Tennessee Judge mask in the mouth of Jimmy Golden. Bass moves in. Studs still trying to put that mask in Golden's mouth. He's got it. He's got it in there. And we'll be back in just a moment. Special meeting card. For reservations and information, call 322-7798. The Boutwell box office open Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. In the main event, a Texas death match. The Tennessee stud Ron Fuller battles cousin Jimmy Golden. The Southeastern Heavyweight Championship on the line is title holder Ken Lucas defends against outlaw Ron Bass. In a Southeastern tag team title match, the belts have been held up. Randy Rose and Dennis Condry take on Jerry Stubbs and Paul Orndorff. In a special tag team match, Bob and Brad Armstrong meet Mr. Saito and Stan. Lane. Robert Gibson opens against Chris Markoff. Don't forget, Ron Fuller against Jimmy Golden in a Texas death match. The Southeastern title at stake as Ken Lucas takes on Ron Bass. Rose and Condry against Stubbs and Orndorff. The Armstrongs against Saito and Lane. It all comes together Monday night. Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium at 8 p.m. Don't forget, wrestling returns here to 42 next Saturday at 2 p.m. That's wrestling here on Channel 42 next Saturday at 2 p.m. With me, Ron Fuller, the Tennessee stud and the current Southeastern Airweight champion, Ken Lucas. Fuller goes against cousin Jimmy Golden in a Texas death match on Monday night in Birmingham's Boutwell Auditorium, and Ken Lucas defends his title against outlaw Ron Bass. Let's hear it from Golden and Bass. Ken Lucas, very tough wrestler. And since you've been in this area, since you've been in Birmingham, you've had a very superb record. You're now the Southeastern heavyweight champion. But Ken Lucas, you met a man last week. You met a man that took you down to the wire, and you took a man 
that just came that close of having that precious title. So I've gone to the promotion I did this time, and you've got to put your title against me this time, Ken Lucas, and you won't come out the title holder. It'll be me this time. And then, Jimmy, I want to see the fireworks, well, baby. I want to say something to you, Ron Fuller. I know you feel real big and bad because you're a cutthroat and a backstabber. How does it feel? Does it make you feel 10 foot tall, boy? Well, let me tell you something. When you step into the ring, we're going to be face to face in a Texas death match, and that means I can do anything that I want to do, Sonny. And I'm going to stretch your long, lanky body from one of that end ring <laughs> to the other, brother, and plumb out the building if I have to. I'm going to fix you in high class, boy, like you've been needing it a long time. Kenny Bass says he's asked for the title match, and he feels like it belongs to him. Well, he held this belt before, Les, and uh, Ron's a big, rugged man. He knows what he's doing in that ring. But you know, it's the difference between going out here and saying what you're going to do and in that ring and performing and doing what you have to do. And I feel this way here, that I Birmingham's been a good town for me, and I took this belt here in Birmingham, and I know one thing for sure, Ron Bass, you're going to have a hard, hard time getting this title away from Ken Lucas. And Jimmy Golden, as far as you're concerned, Ron Fuller's going to work you over like you've never been worked over before, and I'm going to sit right there and enjoy every minute of it. Ron, anything goes, falls, and I count. That's right. Falls don't count. No disqualification, no time limit, nobody pulling anybody apart. We're going to go until the best man wins. And Jimmy Golden, I hope you bring that mask with you Monday night because I'm going to shove it so far down your throat this time, boy. They're going to have to cut you to get it out. Briefly in the closing moments of Southeastern Championship Wrestling, where we've seen a lot of great action today, Les. Uh, Brad Armstrong and Stan Lane, time limit draw. Exactly, in a very good match. Uh, Ron Bass and uh, Robert Gibson going at it hot. And we want to mention next week, Charlie, on the program, we're going to have uh, how takes highlights on tape of Les Thorne and Jerry Stubbs, uh, some of the toughest competition in the World Junior Heavyweight uh, title picture I've ever seen. And uh, apparently Paul Orndorff has said, okay, let's go with it. Saito and Orndorff in an arm wrestling match. We'll see that next week right here on Southeastern Channel.